Hey guys, welcome back again to the channel. This is the first video I am recording in 2021. So I hope you all started well in the new year. And for this video, I'm going to install Arch Linux from scratch using the January 2021 ISO. And we are going to install it with the ButterFS file system as well as Snapper. And I'm going to show you how you can set it up to take snapshot automatically also during system updates. Now in this video, we're going to install, of course, the base install and we're going to install also the desktop environment. I'm going to install a general desktop environment in this video to show you also how you can use the Snapper GUI. So without further ado, let's get going. So here we go, guys. I booted up now the machine from the January 2021 ISO. And as I said in the intro, in this video, we are going to install Arch Linux from scratch with the ButterFS file system and Snapper and show you also how you can configure the system to have automatic snapshots when you do a system upgrade, for example. So I'm using for this video the Arch Wiki as usual, but I'm using in this case specifically the Snapper Wiki and especially for the sub volumes layout for the ButterFS file system. So that you have a you know, written reference if you need to have more infos about it. And I will leave of course a link to those in the video description below. So I would say let's get started here and you can see I already booted up the machine. So the only thing I need to do here because this is in a virtual machine and you probably have to skip this step or you can skip this step. I need to press the E key here and go to the end of the line and type in video equal uh, 1920 per 1080 so that it picks up the resolution of the display and then I can uh, start my virtual machine. Now what I'm going to do here once the system boots up, I will uh, also increase the font size so that you can also see better on your monitors. Since the ISO comes with the terminals font already pre-installed, it's going to take a second. So there you go. First, actually, let me load also my keyboard layout in. I'll show you after how to do that. So I'll type in load keys, D underscore CH dash Latin one. And let me increase the font size first. So let's type in set font ter 132N. This is the size of the terminals font and you can see better. So if you need to find out your keyboard layout, you can use locale CTL and then list dash key maps. And then use the um, pipe and the grep function to narrow down the search. In my case, though, the Swiss keyboard has a CH connotation. And you can see the list there so that after you can select the ones you want and load it with the load keys command that I used before. So once it's done, we type in IP space A to check our internet connection. Now I have already an IP because I'm connected via internet cable. And if you are two, then you should be good to go. If not, you need to use Wi-Fi. For that, I have a video to which I will leave a link on the upper right corner so that if you need to configure your Wi-Fi, you can go there, watch that video. It's a very short video, and then you can come back here and continue the tutorial. So once we have an IP, we can actually proceed to the next step, which is synchronizing the network time protocol. So we can type in time date, CTL, and then set dash NTP, and then true, and hit enter. And this is going to take a second. Now, I've seen this behavior recently in uh, a couple of installations I have done. Then I don't know why it's doing this, but once I press enter again, it comes back to the prompt, basically. There may be some activities behind which are you know, going to be done automatically. So I'm not sure why this is happening, but it doesn't affect the installation anyway. So once we have done this, we can use Reflector to create our mirror list. Now, I've seen some of you guys commenting on some of the videos that you come up with an error when trying this step. I haven't seen that error yet, so I'm not sure why that happens. Uh, but if it does happen again to you in this, uh, when you're trying this tutorial, you can just skip this step and then try again Reflector once we have the system installed. But I'm going to do it here nevertheless. So I'll type in Reflector. Dash C for country. My country is Switzerland. If you have a country with two words, you put them in uh, single quotes. Dash A, the age of the servers I need are six hours. Dash dash sort, then rate, so speed, we sort them by speed. Dash dash save to save this information under slash etc slash pacman dot d slash mirror list and hit enter. So this is going to take a couple of seconds to complete. And I don't see any error happening, and I think it's not going to happen. There you go. So once we are done that, we can synchronize once the server. So pacman-syy. And now we are good to go. So LSBK. 
We have a disk here, 50 gigabytes. It's called VDA. Yours might be called differently. It might be SDA or SDB if you're using a second disk or NVMe 0N1 if you're using an NVMe drive. Uh, in my case, I have VDA. So what I need to do here, I need to first partition the disk. This is a UEFI um, system and I need to create a EFI partition. That's mandatory. I will create a swap partition as well. And the third partition is going to be the main partition, which is also mandatory. So let's begin. And I will use for this GDisk, which is the tool used to create GPT labels, which is mandatory for UEFI systems. And then slash dev slash VDA, the path of the disk and hit enter. So first partition and for new. Partition number one default is fine. The first sector default is fine. The last sector defines the size of the partition. So this is going to be the EFI partition. I want to make it 300 maybe bytes. So I'll type in plus 300 maybe bytes as capital M and hit enter. And the code for this is EF00. There you go. Now, and for new, for the second partition, number two is fine. First sector is fine. Last sector for the swap partition, this machine has 8 gigabytes of RAM, so I'm going to create a 2 gigabyte swap. That should be enough anyway. And then hit enter. And the code for the swap is 8200. And now we can create our last partition, so N for new. And we can accept here basically all the defaults because it's going to use the rest of the disk. File system is fine. And now we can write the changes to the disk by typing in W and confirming by typing Y. There you go. The operation has completed successfully. So LSBLK again, and you can see VDA 1, 2, 3. Next step, it's formatting. So let's begin with VDA 1, which is the ESP, the EFI system partition. So let's type in mkfs.fat. So we make a file system of, the, of a FAT file system type, and I want to do it a 32 FAT file system. So dash capital F 32, and then slash dev slash VDA1 and hit enter. Now, this has to be because it's an EFI partition, so we need to use the, the FAT file system. Second, let's make the swap. So, MK swap and let's use VDA2. So, slash dev slash VDA2. Uh, maybe two, not three. There you go. <laughs> and hit enter. Now we can activate the swap. So, swap on slash dev slash VDA2 and hit enter. And now we can format the VDA3 partition with MKFS, make file system. The file system is badrefs, slash dev, slash VDA3, and then hit enter. And there you go, we formatted our partitions. Now we need to mount our main partition, VDA3, because we need to create the sub volumes for the badrefs file system in there. So let's create first the mount point. Let's create the mount for the VDA3 partition. So let's type in mount slash dev slash vda3 and the mount point is slash mnt the mnt is the installation directory where we are going to install the system and then hit enter so now we can create the sub volumes we need again i will use for this tutorial the snapper wiki which recommends a layout for the battery festival system so the first sub volume i'm going to create is the root sub volume that's the main one so to do this we can type in battery fs S-U-C-R for subvolume create. If you can, if you want, you can type in also the full words here. Under slash MNT, say installation directory. And the um, subvolume mount point is going to be the at symbol, which stands for root subvolume. And then hit enter. Now we can pull up the last command here with the up arrow and create the home subvolume, which is the second subvolume we want to create. So I'm just going to type in home and hit enter again. And the next subvolume by pulling up the last command here is the snapshots subvolume. So I'm going to type in snapshots and hit enter. And pull up the last command. And last but not least, we're going to create also the var underscore log subvolume and hit enter. There you go. So what we need to do now, we need to unmount our mount directory because we need to then remount the subvolumes to their own respective directories, which we need to create still. So let's first unmount the mount directory by typing in umount slash mnt and hit enter. And we need to first mount the root subvolume first. So to do this, we can type in mount dash o 
for options. Now, there are several options here for the BadRFS file system. I'm going to give you four or five of those, and I encourage you to look also at the BadRFS uh, wiki uh, to find out more about these options. There are much, uh, many more technical info there that I can give you in a tutorial. So the first option that I would like to um, put in here, it's the no A time or no access time. That's because BadRFS, it's a copy and write file system. And by default, if we don't put this option, it's going to be mounted with the rel A time, which is going to make the performance of the BadRFS file system slower since it's going to read every single time the metadata to each file. With the no access time, we are going to improve this by not doing that. So the BadRFS uh, file system performance is going to benefit from that. And it's something that I definitely recommend you to do. The second option is the compress option. As you know, um, BadRFS has several compression options. Now, on the BadRFS wiki, there are um, three or four, I think three of those mentioned uh, for now. And the one which is most used for general purpose is the LZO uh, compression. But there are several others which are very interesting as well. So I recommend you to read through there and see which one fits maybe best to you, or if you want to try them out as well. In this tutorial, I'm going to use LZO. The next option I want to use is space underscore cache. The space cache is an option which is going to help the BadRFS file system know uh, to know where are the free blocks on the on the on the on the disk on the partition. Uh, so you can improve performance by using this option. And for this option, we're going to use version two, and that's because version two not only performs better, but the performance does not decrease in on large drives, which is definitely recommended. If you have an hard drive which is big, you know, 500 gigabytes or more, definitely use V2. It's going to be much better. Then we can specify uh, the subvolume we are using. So we are going to use actually the root subvolume. So let's type in subvol equal the add symbol, which represents the root subvolume. And then we need to tell the mount option, okay, where in which partition is this subvolume? You know, it's under slash dev slash VDA3. That's the MotherFS partition. And then we need to tell the mount command, where do you want to mount this? And the mount point is slash MNT. That's our installation directory. So then we can hit enter here. Now we need to mount also the other sub volumes, but before we do this, we need to create the directories for that. So to do this, we can type in mkdir dash p because we need to create multiple directories. And the directories we want to create are under slash mnt, which is already existing. And we can create them all at once by using the curly brace. The first directory I want to create is the boot directory because we're going to need this later to mount the EFI partition in there. And then we need to create the home directory for the home subvolume. I'm going to create the dot snapshots directory for the snapshots volume and also the var underscore log directory for the var log subvolume. And then close this with the curly brace and then hit enter. There you go. Now we can mount the other subvolume. So what we can do, we can pull up the last two commands here and basically replace the subvolume and its mount point. Now something very peculiar here to BadRFS. This is for now a BadRFS file system limitation. When you use these mount options, as it says also in the wiki, once you use options on one subvolume, they are going um, once you use options on one subvolume, like we did before, they are going to be used, those options are going to be used no matter what you type here on all other subvolumes. So I cannot type in here other options for another subvolume at the moment. So I'm gonna leave them anyway as they are. And what I need to do here, because this is gonna be the home subvolume, I'm gonna put in here home and specify the mount point which is slash home, as we said before. There you go. Now let's pull up the last command here and do the same for the snapshots of volume. So we, we replace home with snapshots. And the mount point is not home, but dot snapshots, which we created before. And hit enter. And we do the same for the val log. So let's pull up the last command here and replace snapshots with var underscore log. And replace here the snapshots mount point with var underscore log and hit enter. There you go. So that was a lot of typing. Let's clean up the terminal and type in lsbk. And you can see we have the mount points there. We forgot actually to mount the EFI partition. Let's do this by typing in mount 
slash dev slash VDA one, and we're going to mount it under slash MNT slash boot that we created before. There you go. So LSBLK one more time. And now we have also our mount directory with the boot partition and our main partitions. So now we can proceed by installing the base packages for the system. So we can use packstrap for that. And we need to strap these packages under the slash MNT directory, our installation directory. And the packages I want to install are base and also Linux for the latest Linux kernel. I'm going to install also Linux dash firmware, which is going to provide some extra firmware for the machine. I'm going to install also Vim, my editor, and also AMD dash U code. If you have an Intel processor, you can install Intel dash U code, of course. And that's it for that. So we can just proceed with the installation. And this is going to take a moment, depending also on your internet connection. For me, it's break time, and I'll be back with you guys in a moment. So there you go. The packages are now installed. It took a little bit more over than 23 seconds. So we can clean up the terminal. And now we need to generate the file system table where all the mount points are stored. So to do this, we can use gen fs tab and then dash capital U for using the UUIDs of the partitions. Very important. And we are basically taking the mount points we created before under slash MNT and append this information under slash MNT slash ETC slash FS tab. So we are porting this information to the FS tab file. And let's have a look in the FS tab file. So let's type in cat slash MNT slash ETC slash FS tab and hit enter. And you can see here we have our partitions with the mount points and the options we specified before. So everything looks good. We can clean up the terminal. And let's proceed by entering the installation directory. So we'll need to type in arch dash to root and then slash mnt and hit enter. There you go. So we can proceed with some housekeeping here. First, let's work on our localization stuff and time zones. So first, the time zone. Let's type in ln-sf. So we are creating a symbolic link between slash user slash share slash zone info slash, in my case, Europe. I'm going to show you after how to find your time zone slash Zurich. And we're going to link this under slash etc slash local time. And then we can just proceed. And to find out actually your uh, time zone, I could have actually showed you this before, we can use the time date CTL command and then list dash time zones. Then the pipe uh, and the grep function to now run the search again. Now in my case, Zurich is the city closest to me. So I'll type in, in Zurich and then it comes up with the results. And the same thing you can do with yours and then use the previous command to put this into the system. Once it's done, we can proceed by synchronizing the hardware clock and the system clock. So HW clock dash dash sys 2 hc and proceed. And now we can work on the locale.gen file. So we can type in vim slash etc slash locale.gen. And we are using here, uh, we are looking for our locale. So I'm, using, I'm looking for English US, which is somewhere here. We are going to use the one which has UTF-8. So we uncomment this line and then we can save the file and exit Vim. Now we can generate the locales. So locale-gen, it's going to take a second. There you go. And now we need to put this information also into the locale.com file. So Vim slash etc slash locale com we could have used also the echo command and the string is lang equal en underscore us dot utf dash eight and we can save this file and exit vim and because i chose also a different keyboard layout at the beginning of the video i want to put this also into the vconsole.com file so vim slash etc slash vconsole.com and the string is key map equal the e underscore ch dash latin one that was my keyboard layout and then i can save the file and exit vim and now we can work on the host name of the machine so vim slash etc slash host name and i'm going to give the name to my machine i'm going to call it arch badrefs you can call it of course whatever you like and next, we are going to work on the hosts file. So vim slash etc slash hosts. And I'm going to go here at the end of the line and create a new one, 
with the IPv4 address 127.0.0.1, a tab, and then localhost, and the IPv6 colon colon one, tab tab, then localhost again, and in the last line 127.0.1.1, the host name, which is in my case arch badrefs dot local domain, and then a tab, and then again the host name arch badrefs in my case, and then I can save this file. There you go. So now we can give a password to the root user. So let's type in pass wd and enter the new password and retype it. There you go. So now we need to install the packages, you know, the other packages we need for the system. So let's type in pacman, the package manager, uh, dash s. And the first package is grub, our bootloader. I'm going to install also efi boot mgr. For the networking tools, I'm going to install Network Manager and also Network Dash Manager Dash Applet. I'm going to install also Dialog and also WPA underscore Supplicants. That's for you guys because I don't have a Wi Fi, but you might need this. I'm going to install also MTools and DOS FS Tools, two packages for working with FAT file systems. I'm going to install Git and Reflector. Now, Git is going to be useful afterwards because we need to download and use the Snappack grab package for snapshots. And we're going to install also Snapper, since we didn't install it before. And I'm going to install also Blues and Blues Dash Utils for the Bluetooth adapters and Cups for the printing system. If you have an HP printer, also HP Lip recommended. And what else? We can install also xdg-utils and also xdg-user-dirs for the home directories. And I'm going to install also alsa-utils. I'm going to install also pools audio and also pools audio-bluetooth. And what else? We can install also inet-utils. This is a utility which contains several commands like the hostname CTL command, which might come in handy uh, during the use of the system. And we can install also base-devil and linux-headers. And I think for now that's going to do it. So we can just hit enter here and accept the defaults. And now we can proceed with the installation. So again, this is going to take a moment to install. So break for me, guys. I'll be back with you in a second. So guys, the packages are installed. Let's clean up the terminal. And what we can do first, before installing the bootloader, we need to change something into the init CPIO file. So let's type in vim slash etc slash mk init cpio.conf. Because I'm using the badrefs file system here, I'm gonna put this into the modules and not into the hooks because I read in the wiki that it can cause corruptions on uh, corruption on data. So I'm going to put it here in the modules. I'm going to type in here badrefs and save the file and exit vim and regenerate the image by typing in mk init cpio-p and then Linux because we installed the Linux package before. And it's going to basically recreate the kernel image with the badrefs module. Uh, included in. So it's going to take a second here to perform the command. There you go. So now we can proceed by installing the grub bootloader. So let's type in grub dash install and then dash dash target. The target for the EFI machine for the UFI machine is x86 underscore 64 dash EFI and then dash dash EFI dash directory. The directory you remember is slash boot. Now it's not slash mount slash boot because we are now in the slash mount directory. This is the installation directory. We moved in here when we performed the arch truth command. So when we define the boot directory here, we just say boot, not slash mount boot. Somebody asked me this once in the comments. And then the last parameter is slash slash, uh, sorry, dash dash boot loader dash ID equal grub. And then continue. It's going to take a second. There you go. And now we can generate the configuration file for grub. So let's type in grub dash mk config dash o and then slash boot and then grub and then grub.cfg. So the output of the configuration file goes into this grub.cfg file. 
it's going to take a second here there you go so now we can enable the systems some of the system we uh, installed the packages for so let's begin with network manager system ctl enable network manager and let's do it also for bluetooth by replacing network manager here with bluetooth and also for the cups printing system so let's replace bluetooth with cups voila so let's create a user for the system so let's type in user adds dash m capital g and then we'll i'm going to explain this in a sec and the username in my case is going to be my name so here we created a user with a home directory that's the m switch and the capital g it's giving the user hermano the supplementary group which is called wheel which has to do with the pseudo privileges that we will look in a second first let's give a password to the user so pass wd and then the username and enter the new password and retype it and now we can type in editor equal vim and then vice sudo so here we can define the will group so let's scroll down here we can with control f in vim oh, i think i missed it it was up here we need to basically uncommon the first will group here the one which has the line all equal all all so every member of the will group will have sudo privileges and then we can save the file and exit vim Voila. Now, before I reboot the machine, let me install the last package, which I forgot before, which is pacman-s. It's bash-completion. If you don't have this, uh, also install it because it's going to help you out later also with other commands. Let's install this. And now this is done. So what we can do now, we can exit the installation and go back to the ISO because we're going to configure Snapper afterwards when we reboot the machine. Let's unmount our partitions here with umount a and let's reboot so reboot and it's going to take a second here if everything went well uh, we should be greeted by the grab boot loader in a second and there you go here is grab i forgot actually to add an option to grab so i'll do it here in the line and then i'll put it later into the configuration file again you can skip this step it's just for me to have the full resolution on the console and then control x to boot so there you go the system is now booting up so i enter with my username here and the password and let me check my ip ip space a and the ip is there if you have wi-fi i'll show you afterwards what to do but let me install actually the terminus font so that you can see better so terminus dash font and enter my password here and proceed with the install there you go and now i can type in set font uh, ter-132n there you go easier for you guys to see so again if you type in ip space a with an internet cable you should have an ip if you don't and you have wi-fi you can type in nmtui and you go to activate a connection and there you will see a list of networks you can connect to yours and you'll have an ip as well and once we have that then we can continue installing our system so we did already a lot here, but we are not yet done. So what we need to do first, following the Arch Wiki again for the Snapper Wiki, we need to reconfigure. Uh, we need to reconfigure the snapshots uh, directory because we didn't create actually the configuration for the for Snapper. And once we do that, it's going to create automatically a snapshots directory. The problem is it's already existing, so it's not going to uh, basically create one. It's going to give me an error. So there is a procedure here on the ArchWiki which I'm going to follow, and it's going to explain us uh, how to do this correctly. So what I'm going to do here, as it says here in the wiki, I'm just reading here so that um, I can see also better myself. It is assumed that the subvolume root for the at mark is mounted at root, which is there. It is also assumed that the snapshots directory is not mounted and does not exist as folder. This can be ensured by following the command. So we basically need to delete a first unmount the snapshots directory and then delete it. Then we can create the new configuration for Snapper, which is going to actually create itself a snapshots directory, and then we can remount the directory into the snapshots uh, subvolume. So let's do this. Let's follow it step by step. First, let's type in sudo umount slash dot snapshots. So let's unmount first our snapshots directory. Next, we need to remove this directory. So let's type in sudo rm dash r. So it's going to be recursive slash dot snapshots. 
And now we need to create the configuration for Snapper. So this we can do it with this with the following command. I'm going to do it here for the root subvolume only. So to do this, I can type in sudo, then Snapper dash c. So for configuration, the configuration name is going to be called in my case root. You can specify the name you want here. And what we want to do here, we want to create the configuration. So create dash config and then we need to specify in which mount point is going to be created so this is going to be the root subvolume so it's the slash directory basically and then we can just proceed and this is now done now once we create this configuration actually the configuration command that we just uh, typed in it's going to create actually an extra snapshots subvolume under the roots of volume, which we don't need because we already have actually a snapshot of volume. Um, this command is going to create usually a dot snapshot of volume, which we can delete. So to do this, we can type in sudo badrfs subvolume delete or su del if you want to type in less. And we want to delete the slash dot snapshot uh, subvolume and then proceed. There you go. Now that we have done that, we can recreate our .snapshots directory by typing in mkdir slash .snapshots. And then we can hit enter here. And you can see I forgot the sudo command. So let me pull up here and type in here sudo. There you go. And now we can remount the snapshot subvolume into this directory that we just uh, created. So because I have already the mount point in the fstab file, if you followed along, you should have it too. We can just type in, in here sudo mount dash a. And if everything goes well, we don't see any error. That means now it's mounted. So this is all there is to it. And what we can do still, we can also change the permissions for the snapshot folder. So to do this, we can type in sudo chmod and the permissions are 750. This will make all the snapshots that Snapper creates to be stored outside of the roots of volume so that the roots of volume can easily be replaced anytime without losing the Snapper uh, snapshots. So let's continue here. And I forgot here to define the directory, which is slash dot snapshots. There you go. Now, only the root user can have access to this folder right now, but I can change this by following also another procedure. So first of all, we need to go into the configuration file for Snapper. So to do this, we can type in sudo vim slash etc slash snapper slash configs slash root, which we created before. And I'm going to do two things here. First, I'm going to change this allow users because I want to be able actually with my user to basically manage these things, these snapshots. So I'm going to put in here my user. And I'm going to go down because I want to show you also here something else. Now, this is very important because it's going to define how many snapshots you want to keep into the system. Now, the thing which is very important here is the limit for the timeline cleanup. Now, because we are going to create here a system which is going to perform snapshots every time there is an upgrade to the system, it's going to end up with a lot of snapshots. And if you have a lot of snapshots, then it's going to take also, of course, a lot of space in the system. So we want to change this. And to do this, we can also pick up the timeline um, recommended in the Arch Wiki. And the Arch Wiki recommends this timeline cleanup, which we need to enable anyway later. So we can enter insert mode here. So for the yearly, I'm going to go to zero. Same for monthly. And for weekly, I'm going to go also for zero. For daily, I'm going to go with seven. This is the recommendation for the wiki. And for hourly, I'm going to go with five. So that's going to do it for me. And then we can save this file and exit Vim. There you go. And now we can enable the timeline and the timeline cleanup uh, by, of Snapper by typing in sudo systemctl enable dash dash now and then snapper dash timeline dot timer and we're going to do the same for the cleanup so we replace here timeline with cleanup and continue there you go so the cleanup and the timeline are now available and they will perform what we define in the configuration file so let's clean up the terminal 
Okay, so we did a lot of work here and before I continue configuring uh, Snapper and other packages, let me also install some packages from the AUR because I need actually just one. That's a snap pack grub package, which includes grub butterfs and also snap pack. So to do this, actually, I'm going to first install Yay. Uh, not that I want to use it, but I'm going to show you also how to install it so that you can use it later if you finish to install the system. Um, so to do this, we can type in git clone https colon slash slash and then aur dot arch linux dot org slash yay and continue here now let's move into the yay directory so let's type in cd and then yay and type in make pkg dash si and then package build and then continue by hitting enter it's going to take a second here to pull down the package. There you go. We need to first install the dependency, which is go, which is not going to take too long here. There you go. So now it's going to basically uh, download and extract the package and compile it. So it's going to take a moment here. I'll be back with you guys in a second. So now we can proceed installing yay. So we just hit enter and now we are done. So we can go back to the home directory here. And now we can use yay to install, for example, Snappack. I'm going to use yay to install two packages. So I'm typing yay-s. The first one is snap-pack-grub. And the other one is snapper-gui, which is going to be useful afterwards when we install the desktop environment. So hit enter there. And difference is to show none. We need to import this key. So I'm just going to accept the defaults there. And again, it's going to take here a moment because we need to install some uh, dependencies, as you can see here, and then it's going to download both packages and install them. So it's going to take some time and I'll be back with you guys when it's done. So there you go, guys, the packages are now installed. And as you can see, uh, it's already created a couple of snapshots because it installed first uh, the snapper, um, no, sorry, the snapper grub package, and it took a snapshot from that. And then after it installed snapper GUI, it, in, it created another snapshot for that as well. So uh, the thing is already working. Now these snapshots are going to appear in the grub bootloader. Uh, I'm gonna show you this afterwards when we reboot anyway the machine. So I think we are done for now here. What we can do, we can actually install a desktop environment. So let's type in sudo pacman-s. I'm gonna install, well, the graphic card, I don't need it because I'm on a virtual machine, but if you have uh, an Intel card, you can install xf86-video-intel. For AMD, you can install xf86-video-amd GPU. And for NVIDIA, and for NVIDIA, you can install NVIDIA and NVIDIA-utils if you have a recent card from NVIDIA. If you have older cards, uh, I'll definitely recommend you to explore the ArchWiki for maybe drivers from the AUR if you have an old card. Uh, I have also other videos on the channel about using NVIDIA Optimus or Prime, uh, Prime Run if you want to know how to use that. So I'm going to skip the, dri the graphic drivers here. So I'm going to install the display server, which is Xorg. And for the desktop environment, I'm just going to install GNOME here very quickly. I'm not going to install extra packages. I'm going to install GDM, which is the display manager. I'm going to install Firefox as a browser and also GNOME-tweaks. And I think for the purpose of this tutorial, that's going to do it. So I'm just going to proceed here and accept these defaults and then proceed with the installation. So again, this is going to take maybe one minute. So I'll be back with you guys when it's done. So there you go, guys, uh, we installed the packages and there are still a couple of things we need to perform. So first we need to enable the display manager so that when we reboot the machine, it's going to be uh, starting in graphical mode. So to do this sudo system CTL enable GDM very simply. And uh, the last thing we want to do actually before, well, the last two things we want to do before we reboot the machine. So the first is the boot uh, directory, which is not a bad RFS file system. So we have an article here, uh, a part of the article on the wiki, which is explaining us to create a hook uh, so that we can back up the boot partition as well uh, when there is a kernel update. So to do this, we need to uh, create a file. And for that, I'm going to create a new directory. So I'm going to type in first sudo mkdir slash etc slash pacman.d and then slash hooks and then I can create the file by typing in sudo vim slash etc slash pacman.d slash hooks and the file is going to be called 50 dash boot backup dot hook 
and this is again in the wiki so if you need more influence about it you can look them also up there so the hook is going to be working well also with snappack which we just installed so the first thing we need to define here is the trigger so when is this going to be triggered basically so trigger close the square bracket the first parameter is operation I'm not going to go too in-depth about systemd here, but it's going to be equal to upgrade. We're going to perform this on upgrade. We're going to perform this on install. And we're going to perform also this on remove. Then we have a type path, a type option, which is equal to path. And the target, it's going to be equal to boot and everything in it. And this trigger is going to trigger an action, so the action is going to be depending, depends, equal to rsync, which is not installed yet, we need to install it first. And then description equal backing up slash boot. And the next line is going to be when we are going to execute this, it's going to be pre transaction and what are we going to execute so execute equal to slash user slash bin slash rsync so rsync is not installed yet we are going to install it dash a so we are using the most common options and then dash dash delete slash boot and we're going to create the backup for it which is called dot boot backup and I think this is going to do it, so we can just save the file and exit Vim here and clean up the terminal. And we need to install rsync, so let's type in sudo pacman-s rsync. And let me type this correctly and proceed. So let's proceed with the installation. And you can see it found also the boot partition there, so it has been now backed up. So the hook is working correctly. I think what we need to do, I still need to actually change one thing in grub sudo vim etc slash default slash grub you can skip this step guys it's just that i need to put in here again the video resolution so video equal 1920 per 1080 save the file and exit and recreate the configuration file so sudo grub dash mk config dash o slash boot slash grub slash grub dot cfg and it should be recreated there you go so now we can actually restart the machine so let's go ahead and do that so let's type in reboot and i'm going to show you first the snapshots that were created now these snapshots are read only and in the snapper wiki as you can see here now we have sorry i interrupt shortly we have the arch linux snapshots so when we go here we see all the snapshots that we basically have in the system every time we did an upgrade or we installed something so these snapshots are read only and there are there is a way it's a quite simple way to turn them into read and write so that if you need you can you know extract some file from there some files from there i'm not going to do it in this tutorial but uh, you will find the uh, procedure in the snapper wiki it's just one command really so it's not that complicated anyway let's go back here to the main installation and boot up the system if everything went well we should be greeted by the gdm uh, display manager there you go so i'll enter my password here and I'll probably need to adjust the screen resolution. And let me go here to 1080p, which is right here, and 60 hertz, and apply. And there you go, we are now full screen. So let me pull up the tweaks tool here very quickly because I wanna go a little bit easier on my eyes. I'm gonna put these two on top here. I just like these options, I do them all the time. And I'm going to change also my um, keyboard layouts for the graphical interface. If I find the region, there you go. I just need to put in here the Swiss um, keyboard, which is right here. And delete the English one because I don't have it. And now let's open up the terminal shortly. And this is my terminal. So I'm going to configure this also very quickly. I'm going to just a few options here for the color and remove the space, uh, the scroll bar. And I go full screen shortly here, increase the font size and typing in here, you name dash R. And you can see we have our kernel there. So good. Let's close this and open up Snapper GUI, which should be available. There you go. 
And you can see we have our snapshots there. And because we gave actually access to these snapshots to other uh, to my user, and I can click one and open, and you can see it's not working. And that's because I forgot actually one step uh, before. So let's correct this very quickly. Let's go into the terminal. And again, I'm gonna go full screen here and increase the font size so that you can see better. So what I forgot to do is to change the permissions uh, of the file, of the snapshots file, and also the owner uh, of the file. So let's do this both. So let's do both. Let's type in sudo chmod. I'm gonna change these permissions to read and write, and that's gonna be under slash dot snapshots. There you go. And I'm gonna type in my password. And I'm gonna change also the user permission. So I'm gonna type in sudo chon. So the user is gonna be always root, but for the group, I wanna use my username because I wanna be able to access these and then slash dot snapshots. There you go. So I think the problem is now corrected. So let's close this and restart Snapper GUI. And let's select one of the snapshots and click open. And you can see we can open up the snapshots easily now. Now, again, these are not uh, read and write, they're just read. But as I said, you will find in the wiki how you can change that with one command. So this is going to do it. Actually, the last thing I would like to tell you, um, it's the file system check hook in the mkinitcpio.com uh, MK file. Now, uh, there is an option and I probably should do it as well because uh, it's probably safer. If I type in, in here sudo vim slash etc slash mkinitcpio.conf and type in my password and go down to the hooks section, you can see we have here the file system check hook. Now, because we're using a, a ButterFS file system, this hook could actually turn into some data corruptions. So you can remove it if you want to. Now, if you want to have a file system check on your boot partition, then you will have to leave it there because we have an ESP, which is uh, the EFI partition is actually not BadRFS. Uh, it's uh, a FAT file system. So if you want to check the boot partition, you can leave this on. If you don't, then you can definitely remove the file system check hook here and regenerate the image with mkinitcpio-p linux okay i'm just going to show you this i'm not going to do it here in this uh in this video so i think this is it for the base install of arch linux with the january 2021 iso with the bad refs file system and, and snap snapper and snapshotting capabilities i know this is a long video guys there's a lot of information in here i tried my best to uh, make them as short as possible and as clear as possible if you do have any question let me know in the comments below and um, I will be trying to answer you as soon as I can. And if you want to support the channel, as always, you can visit our Patreon website. You can donate via PayPal. It's always appreciated. And if you didn't subscribe to the channel, please subscribe and like the video if you did. And I'll see you in the next video, which is going to come up very soon, guys. Have a nice one.